Uh, hello to my second tea vlog. Um, first vlog, I was talking about the idea of arrogance. And now I'm doing a vlog about my own positive features, so irony. But, um, there's a point here. It's mostly about me and what I need, but it is a point that generalizes. So, what etiquette demands is modesty. That you not be arrogant, that you don't put yourself above other people. But one of the ways that people will do that, especially by kids learning this stuff, learning how to be a person, is that they'll take it literally. They'll take it as, oh, I'm not allowed to be good at things. I think it especially happens if you don't get praise for things as a kid. I, uh, my siblings and I played music. Uh, I played the piano for years. And uh, when I went to school, I stopped practicing. And I want to say that was the first time I remember my mom saying that I was good was when she was saying that I could have been the best because and the thing about that compliment is that that's not a compliment it is shaped like a compliment except that you failed and also, it's a compliment at the wrong time. If someone's doing something which is important, you want to make them know it at the time. Like that at the time is when it matters most that they are, that they are doing the thing. And so, really, what this is about is it being arrogant, now that I made a vlog about being arrogant, it is about um, being able to consider what other people have told you and your own moral standards apply to yourself and judge, you know what, are you a good person? and be able to say yes. Some of the reasons... A lot of people talked about my being a good listener. Um, and watch my face as I try to dodge the compliments that I'm trying to give to myself. I do listen, I try to actively listen, try to make sure the person t communicating things to me under can tell that I understand what they are trying to say. And I try to validate people's feelings especially when they're not letting themselves validate their feelings. Um, if, if, if someone is like uh, talking about like, you know, the, the, I know this was just sort of how it is or something with respect to something that's really not fair. Like, okay, it's how it is. It still ain't fair. You still don't deserve it. 
Like, even if there's nothing you could do about it, and there's nothing anybody could do about it, and it just straight up comes down to massive injustice on a cosmic scale, you still don't deserve the result of that massive injustice. And one that I've had to do on myself, and, and I think that it's important to remember this pattern, because it's something that can come up. So, like, it feels like if you do something, you are endorsing this thing that you do. Which means when you're in a no-win situation, and make a choice between... Which means that if you're in a no-win situation, and make a choice between winning, a choice between one bad outcome and another, it's real easy to feel like you have accepted full responsibility for the bad that you let happen. It's not true. The situation is, the fact that you made a choice in the situation doesn't make the situation your fault. The situation is at fault here. If if you have a choice between, I can, sh like, I think it was with respect to my facial hair, because I have sensitive skin, I can't shave every day. I just can't. Like, I tried, and my face just got so cut up. Uh, and so, like, if, if you're making a choice between, do I shave today because I have a bad dysphoria day, or do I shave tomorrow because I have to be out in public tomorrow and I want to pass as best as possible because I'm going to like public bathrooms and such. I, I don't want people looking at me in the women's bathroom and not being able, and, 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 and deciding, no, I'm not going to believe that this person is a woman. Technically not a woman, but there's the bathrooms are binary and binary approximation is woman. Um, but point being, I didn't shave that day, and I felt really horrible, and I felt more horrible because I felt more horrible because I felt like I couldn't complain about having this bad stubble that day because I accepted it. I made that happen by not shaving. Even though I kind of, my hand was forced. I, I took responsibility for something that I was forced to do by bad circumstances. And so, validating people's feelings. If you are forced by bad circumstances to do something that makes you feel terrible, it's the circumstances' fault, it's not yours. You have every right to feel terrible in that situation. Um, I didn't get through a lot of compliments of myself, did I? I... I I seem to have a lot of interesting things to say. Uh... Judging by your reaction to the previous vlog, and also just, like, I, I am getting a lot of conversations online, and in person. And, I mean, if, if I'm going at these conversations with any care, which I have been for years, um, that is the thing I can take credit on, and a good example of my improving myself when I realized that I've been an ass. Uh, I don't know if any of that was coherent. So, I, I'm i good at being an interesting person to talk to. And part of... And part of how I became a good at being an interesting... How I became good at being an interesting person to talk to is that I... I have a bit of skill at changing what I do in response to learning better. Um, so, I mean, not 
perfect skill. I, like, people talking about ableism have been talking for a while about how stupidity and intelligence aren't really... They are terms that are used to enforce violent oppression against people. So, like, in my previous vlog, when I was talking about folding ideas being brilliant, I meant folding ideas is taking a whole lot of stuff that is communications knowledge, that is knowledge that communications people study and learn and learn how to apply, and applying it and communicating it in a way that the general public can understand in videos like um, his video on Gamergate and his video on... Um, his video on contacting your representatives um, and and probably all his videos but like those videos specifically I remember things that I think are specifically communication major things and so like I didn't word it well then because I'm still trying to get better at it I remember Doug Hofstadter said in an essay once was it Hofstetter or Dennett? I think it was Hofstetter. He was talking about how none of us... He was talking in the 1970s or 80s, I think. So it was more true then. But none of us grow up speaking non-sexist English. Like, we are all... When we are trying to be non-sexist, translating from sexist English to non-sexist English, speaking... We are speaking non-sexist English as speakers of another language. Um, that's not how he phrased it. That's the the spe English as speakers of another language is the common phrasing because sometimes English isn't your second language or your third language or your fifth language when you're learning English. It, you're a speaker of another language learning a new language that is English when you are you know, a speaker of another language learning a new language in English. But we as English speakers, English, the English we learned is sexist and ableist and racist, actually. There's, there's some, like, old-timey sayings. I don't know that I went a little bit Southern on that, which is itself a myth. Because, oh God, like, if, if you watch A Time for Burning... It's about like oh, I forget where it is, but it's 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 like well in the north of the United States. Racism is all over the United States. Like I remember hearing someone describe it as like we like the South was like black people whoa just holding the slaves, and the North was like stop holding black people as slaves because you're making us white laborers seem like black laborers and that's just like not cool uh like black labor like us white laborers who deserve respect seem like black laborers who don't deserve respect and that's not cool like the racism was all over and it's still all over um anyway uh point is i'm not perfect at being better but one of the things that I do and have done is notice when I screw up and try to figure out how to do better. I mean, not perfectly, but like, like, there's an occasion that I just remember really vividly when I, when, when someone explained, someone was talking about something in a meeting and then another person came in and like asked about it and I gave a summary and the person who originally said it was like you weren't at that meeting and like that was just like on the one hand I mean I guess I can sort of see how that might be an utterly cold burn on the other hand like dude you need to wonder I don't like the term dude I mean, Okay, like, like, you, Pac-Bat, you need to wonder 
in before you speak, one of the things that should be like in your mind is, am I the person who should be saying this? And I think what and we past that look to like just should I be speaking up right now? It, it is what I have to say the most important thing, the thing that should be hard, taking up the conversation right now. Someone I know, um, I quit the Less Wrong group. Uh, I Less Wrong is a website of it's supposed to be about rationality. It's kind of really bad at being about rationality in a lot of ways. Uh, mostly because of the overwhelming privilege of the most influential voices there. Um, but, like, I was involved for a while, and part of my involvement was, like, actually going to a meetup of people who were into the website in a, the area where I live. Someone I know who became one of my best friends eventually, when they first met me, I was really obnoxious. I was I was just jumping in the conversation with every inane comment that came to my mind. I was annoying. It. I stopped going to meetups for a bit, came back to a meetup after a break. They did not realize I was the same person for weeks. I mean, once a week meet up, but they didn't realize for weeks because, like, I had, like, between those two meetups, the, the meetups where they knew me before and the meetups where they knew me after, I registered in my head, and this is pure speculation, but I'm guessing it's the you weren't at that meeting thing that was like the, 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 the event that set off the chain, like the, the, the last snowflake to start the avalanche or whatever you want to call it. I learned to have some I'd learned to pay attention to whether I was going to be saying anything worth saying learn to let other people take control of the conversation I become a lot more worth knowing honestly worth being around with Like, even, it's even easier for me to, to, to be unfair to my past self than it is for me to be unfair to my present self. But, part of the point of this video is saying, no, actually, you did some good there. You had some real merit there. I have a real tea tray now, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and take my tea and get out of here. But yeah, um, mentioned at least a couple ways in which I'm a decent person, and you know what, that's a good thing, being able to say you're a decent person. <laughs>